Pats fans and Rams fans, thank you for joining us here today on this crossover episode, Locked On Patriots, Locked On Rams. Travis Rogers, host of the Locked On Rams podcast, one half of the lo- of the hosting tandem on Locked On Rams, and Mike DeBate, host of Locked On Patriots. Travis, we've talked about this game from a Patriots perspective, from a Rams perspective. As the late great Gorilla Monsoon might say, if this were a WrestleMania promo, <laughs> the time for the talk has just about ended. If the Rams are to come into New England and defeat the Patriots and hold that four and a half point advantage right now that they're enjoying in terms of being the favorites thanks to our friends over at FanDuel what are LA's keys to victory they got a block I mean this is I I think there are two things kind of working in the Rams favors coming into this one number one is that Sean McVay I think is as about as good at doing this as anyone in the league I, I I still believe that he is one of those guys they were bad last week they're very rarely bad two weeks in a row. So I expect him to get his team ready to play. They were bad in a very specific way, and that is that they couldn't block anybody at all. I do not expect him to let that happen either through scheme and those guys uh, being put in a better position or by changing the guys that are there because they were doing Mm -hmm. all right prior to bringing uh, Jackson and Avila back. You have some healthy options there. If Rob Havenstein comes back at right tackle, you might have the best version of your offensive line really for the first time all season long. So if they block it up correctly and give Matthew Stafford time, I'm still a huge believer in him. You give him time and weapons, and you have weapons, you have Kyron Williams, you have a running game, you have the two receivers that you and I have talked about uh, uh, quite a bit. Those guys are going to be there. Really, Puka has not had a big game since he came back originally against the uh, Minnesota Vikings, so I keep waiting for him to kind of hit his stride a little bit. Uh, I I think the Rams are in really good shot. I think they have the ability to get after the quarterback. They have the ability to score some points if they can block a little bit, and, and, and I expect them to win the game. That being said, I expect him to win the game on Monday night against the uh, the Miami Dolphins, and they look dreadful. So, you know, nobody knows anything in this league. My my co-host, Kirk Morrison, who I do the pre and the half uh, and half and postgame show with on the Rams flagship station, he says it to me. He's been saying it to me every week for nine years that we've been together. Every week is a new week. That mm. whatever happened last week does not matter. Whatever's going to happen next week has nothing to do with this week. It is the ultimate week to week league. But I do expect them to be a lot better, and I expect them to be a lot better up front. If those guys can't do it, they're going to put other guys in. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the New England Patriots are a mirror image of what this Rams team is trying to do coming in here and earn the victory. If the Patriots are to be successful on the field on Sunday, they need to establish the run. And one of the big reasons, one of the big ways they're going to do that is to successfully run block, something that this team has had difficulty with right along. And on Sunday against against the Chicago Bears, they deployed a unit of five offensive linemen that really sold out to be able to block for the run the tight ends got involved and they're going to have to do that as well as well as the running backs on non-running down so this is something that i think the new england patriots are absolutely looking at and they're trying to exploit what they can from that rams defensive line and that's not going to be an easy task but if the patriots want to be able to win this game they're going to need to be able to block and they're going to be able to block effectively in order to establish the run because one of the big things that Alex Van Pelt would love to do is establish that outside zone let Ramondre Stevenson be able to run the ball effectively that opens up so much for Drake May in terms of being able to take shots down the field extend plays with his legs or use the intermediate areas to be able to get short yardage gain if the Patriots are doing that they're in good shape once again, it comes back to controlling the line, uh, c- controlling the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. The Patriots, when they do that and they win those battles, they're not only in games, but generally they're giving themselves an opportunity to win. In their three wins this year, they've controlled the line of scrimmage on both sides against the Bengals, against the Jets, and then again now against the uh, uh, the Chicago Bears on Sunday. Not going to be an easy task against the Rams. This is not an easy team to control the line of scrimmage, but the Patriots have to do it. And last but certainly not least, Travis, and I think this is true of both teams, 
If they want to come away as the victor, the Patriots absolutely have to force and capitalize on turnovers. They can't necessarily rely on talent alone to be able to beat this Rams team because I don't think they match up in that area. They give them a good shot. They give them a good fight, but the Rams are more talented. So the Patriots have to hope that the Rams make some mistakes and they have to be right there in place to capitalize on them. They do all those three. They'll have that puncher's chance that I talked about earlier.